Hello everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog Electronic Music School. Uh, today we're just going to do a short sort of tech overview of one particular topic and that topic is kick drums. So do you use kick drums in your electronic music productions? Probably you do. Do you know what you're doing when you're choosing a kick drum? Maybe not. We're going to solve that. We're going to talk about the different categories of kick drums. We're going to talk about acoustic kick drums and then synthetic kick drums. We're going to talk about the different ways of creating kick drums, like using samples, slicing them out of um, other loops, and uh, and of generating them, like generating them with original uh, plugins and how to layer them and what the different parts are and how to how to name them. And we're all going to do this in record time. Like I hope to keep this about twenty minutes or less. So. Because of that, we're going to just jump straight into it. So you're, what's a kick drum? What's a kick drum, first of all? You may not even be familiar with the different types of drum sounds that there are. And so a kick drum, if you imagine a, uh, a band on stage, you've got the guitarist, the vocalist, the drummer. The drummer sits inside of his drum kit. And at the drummer's feet is a really big like uh, yeah, a drum, basically a big case with a membrane on it. And... The drummer, he kicks down onto a pedal, which slams a beater into that membrane. That membrane then makes a sound, uh, which you hear. The, no, the impact of the beater makes a sound, which you hear. And it pushes the membrane out of position. And then the membrane goes and comes down to resting position. Uh, let me show you in a little PowerPoint what that looks like physically. So... This is referred to as a kick drum or a bass drum, right? It's called a bass drum because it has a lot of bass frequencies or it's called a kick drum because it uses that beater to slam into it. Those are synonyms. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and this is also known as an acoustic kick drum because it's all happening acoustically. And what you might do is you might stick a microphone in there and record all that mess that's going on in there. And that's going to give you a really characterful and colorful sound uh, because this this big box has a lot of things that vibrate and create a lot of like um, acoustic signals in a very organic way. And so let me show you, if we jump over to Ableton, let me show you what some of that looks like, okay? So I've got a couple of, um, of acoustic drum samples here, and let's just listen to what those sound like. There we go. So do you hear how different those four different samples are? Let's let's just go over it again. Okay, so these are like four different samples that you um, where you basically put a microphone into a kick drum and just record all that all that messy stuff, right? It gives you a very different sound each time, um, and that can be absolutely awesome if you want if you actually want your um, if you want your kick drum to sound like it's acoustically done, like it's made by a real drummer. And that could be very appropriate if you're trying to produce something that sounds like you've got real instrumentalists on stage playing instruments, but you might be faking it with using some samples like this. Uh, a couple of things to watch out for. If you use these samples over and over again, they will sound identical each time, and that's not how we perceive a real drum kit. So it might sound robotic if we use the same drum, the same acoustic drum over and over again. And people might be like, hmm, something sounds a bit synthetic about that. Maybe that's not intentional, maybe it is. That's up to you. Um, the samples that I was just using right now, I would recommend, there's this um, a big sample library by the Loop Loft. They do all these like really cool uh, acoustic drum recordings and they have these really high fidelity uh, just drum sounds that you can use if you want to go for that that acoustic vibe. But maybe you don't want that hi-fi acoustic vibe, but you do like the acoustic character. Well, one other thing that you could do is you could uh, slice drums out of a break. Breaks are the, um, like in the, in the olden days of funk records, um, what would happen is all the all the instrumentalists would stop at one point and let the drummer do his drum break, which is where the drummer gets really, really creative but stays in the beat. Um, and that really spawned a whole bunch of subgenres. And I'm just going to show you uh, what that could look like in um, a particular break called the Amen break. Let's just drag that into Ableton. Uh, just checking. Yep, just checking that Ableton was recording there. 
disable the warp. And this is what the Amen break sounds like. <laughs> So obviously this is a recording of a physical drum kit. Um, also this particular loop gave rise to the entire genre of drum and bass and so it's it's kind of nice to, to um, just know that. Now you can snip a bit out of there and say okay well this drum hit, this maybe you want to use in your track and you can just drag it into a, into a new MIDI track which will drag it into a sampler and you can then Play around with it and, and use that as your as your kick drum you know you can program a simple beat which you can do you can create like a little midi clip set your stuff to 16th notes and just do a four on the floor pattern which is called which is what it's called when you've got four notes uh for every bar the numbers up here represent the bars well one two three four So yeah, so you can you can mess around with that, and therefore you can basically slice uh, you can slice organic drum samples out of pretty much any content. Um, however, 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 uh, you may not be looking for an acoustic or organic sounding drum. Um, a little history lesson is uh, is interesting at this point, and let me go back to my PowerPoint and let's talk about these beautiful babies. These things are called drum machines and they were created in, I want to say the late 70s or early 80s and their intention was to replace drummers. So it was like, let's create a box that can replace a drummer uh, by creating drum sounds and one of the drum sounds in there is the kick drum sound. Now they were really bad at that. They didn't, they don't sound realistic, realistic at all. So they were a commercial failure. Um, and it took a couple of years, but then some pioneering folks, uh, they figured out that they could take these uh, very synthetic drum sounds and play them to a dance floor and that the audience like responds really, really well to them because they've got a lot of bass in them. They've got a lot of like punch in the chest. And uh, yeah, they just sound really, really good. And then as electronic music became more and more common and instrumental music was sort of um, caught up on by, by electronic music. These became staples of so many genres that you, you've you heard these machines everywhere in everything you've ever heard. It's like 50% of all, you know, about 50% of all productions ever, maybe. Maybe I'm exaggerating, maybe not. Use these sounds. Um, and so you want to be familiar with them. And particularly the one on the top left is called the Roland TR. 808 and the one on the bottom right is called the Roland TR 909. So these are the 808 and the 909. That's how they're referred to. And if you want to like a, get a very simple shortcut on it, the top left, the 808, defines hip hop and trap music. And the, the 909 on the bottom right, it defines techno. Okay, we're going to look at these sounds right now and you're going to recognize them. Okay, so let me uh, let me go back to it. Ableton and you have these sounds in Ableton no matter what level of Ableton you've got you've got these uh, the drums over here and then you've got the core kits you can hear this so let's grab the 808 and we're today we're just talking about kick drums okay we're just talking about kick drums nothing else so let's just look at the kick drums one, two, three, four. There. Now, notice, I'm just going to just play one. There's a bit of a thump on the start there, but then it, for a very long time it goes, ooh, there's a very dark, long section to it, which you may not hear if you're working on small speakers. So um, uh, do double check that, do double check that. Um, if you can hear that, you're in a good, you're in good shape. Now let's compare that to the 909, which we'll just drag the same note over and solo that. This is like really tough, like very mid-rangey kind of a tough punch. Let me call it 909, oops, and let me call it 808, boom. So for comparison, so 
So these are two good starting points. So an 808 is good for uh, a lot of um, a lot of genres really use 808s, um, but hip hop especially and some house music as well. Um, you can then determine how long you want that note to be for it to go ooh, over how much time. And the same with the 909. You can also have a longer one and a shorter one, but the 909 generally has, has this much more tougher start to it. Um, and yeah, so just one unique thing you can do with the 808 is you can, um, with a long 808 sample, let me, let me grab a, a long 808 sample. Yeah, let's, let's grab this one. It's a bit distorted, but you'll get the point. So in hip hop, what they'll often do is instead of just using it as a kick drum, they'll actually use a long version of this kick drum and they'll play it up and down the keyboard. And you've, you've heard this in like hip hop before where they, um, where it's, yeah, they'll, they'll be, they'll use a kick drum, an actual kick drum, which is short and punchy. And then they'll use these very long versions of the 808 kick drum, uh, to create like a bass line. They'll, they'll effectively be creating a, uh, like a singing and melodic bass line, uh, using these. So that's in hip hop. It's so common that they're, they're actually just referred to as 808s, which in that case is actually an 808 bass line. Um, we'll do this with a, um, with a plugin later as well, just to show you how we can make it a little bit more pure. Cause this distorted one is maybe a little bit, a little bit, uh, too bright. Um, and then the 909 on, on its, from its side, let's, uh, play a four by four 909 pattern. If you put a whole bunch of saturation on here, you're going to get into like that super hard techno vibe. So you can, you can kind of imagine um, that in techno, you hear this a lot. Like there's a lot of, um, a lot of techno is based on a, on a foundation of the 909 and a lot of hip hop is based on a foundation of the 808. Okay. So just be familiar with those terms. Um, because now we're going to start looking at what else we can do with, uh, with kick drums. And for that, we need, uh, just a little bit of explanation on, let me come back to the, the screen. For that, we just need a little bit of explanation on what the different parts of a kick drum are. Okay, when you're describing a kick drum, effectively, a lot of people will tell you there's three parts to a kick drum, right? There's the click in the high end, click, 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 click. Then there's the thump in the chest around 100 hertz. And then there's the sub, the boomy part, which is everything, let's say, under 80 hertz. Usually it's got a big peak around 50, 40 or 50 hertz, let's say. Um, and those three parts together create like a, a, a well-rounded and coherent kick drum. Um, effectively, it might be useful to think of it as just high versus low frequencies. Does your kick have a lot of low frequencies? Is it very dark? Or does your kick have a lot of high frequencies? Is it very bright? In those two examples I was just giving, the 808 and the 909, the 808 had a lot of low frequencies, but not a lot of high frequencies. And the, um, the 909 had a lot of high frequencies and it had low frequencies as well, but the highs were so loud and dominant that the, the lows were less prominent, but they, they were still there, but still less prominent. So whenever you're designing a kick, just think about the balance of low versus high. Okay. Is it appropriate to have a lot of high frequency content in your kick or not based on your genre and for your genre? just listen to other music like seriously just listen to other reference tracks and try to put it into words say is this a bright kick or not and maybe it's a bright kick at the clicky part at the start but not at the at the end or vice versa maybe it gets very bright after a while notice these things okay and so just imagine that you've got the low part which is around 50 hertz and the high part which is like from about a thousand hertz onwards. And then they meet sort of in the middle in the area that could be called the thump, which is the part that hits you in the chest and is in the low mid frequencies 
um, or the high low frequencies, depending on how you want to say it. But it's around 120 hertz, something like this. Usually around 100 hertz, a kick has that toof part to it that will hit you in the chest. And if you, it doesn't have that, it might sound a bit hollow, you know. So think of it like a seesaw, you know, like a balance. It goes up and down and up and down. So is yours more like a bright one or more like a dark one? Just um, think of it in those terms. And for that, um, I would now recommend that we go to have a look at some plugins. Okay, we're, we're already at a 20 minute mark in this video, so I'm going to speed through this. But effectively, I want to show you a plugin called, here we go, back to Ableton, called Kick2. Kick2 looks like this. Okay, Kick2 is... Um, if you look at it, it's a, it's a kick synthesizer, effectively. And so here is the main fundamental carrying tone. The thing that's going to create the body of the kick drum is here. And then on the right hand side, there's three things called click. There's click one, click two, and click three, which we are going to start by having it muted, okay? Just muted from zero. And what you see here, this line, this line represents the pitch of um, of a sine wave that goes from a very high pitch sweeps down to a low pitch over a certain amount of time. So I'm setting the amount of time to one second, so a thousand milliseconds, and see how this sounds. Woo! Okay, so that 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 descending, it's just one sine wave going. Pew. Now if we make that descent go way faster. Now we suddenly have something that sounds like a kick drum. And this one, this one wave that goes from high to low frequencies is effectively giving us, um, it's giving us the sub and it's giving us the thump. And look at this, this the, where it descends here from, the, from, from its highest pitch to its lowest pitch. Uh, that was giving you the thump in the chest. And where it stays stable, that's giving you the sustained period where it just keeps going. Okay. So most kick drums will be a bit shorter than this. And we'll just tighten that up. And when it starts up here, it's really high. So I would, it's very clicky. So I would probably start it down lower. So you still get that knock in the chest. And then here it stays stable. It, it should stay, let's say it stays at A1, which is 55 hertz, which just as a bit of folklore is actually a bit of a magic number because of the 909. The bass drum of the 909 resonates naturally at 55 hertz. So um, this is a very safe place to start because um, a lot of kick drums will, will have their fundamental frequency at about 55 hertz or maybe a bit lower than that to get even a bit deeper. But don't be tempted to go much lower than that because once you start getting down to like 40 hertz, on most systems your, your, your kick won't actually sound like it has any body to it anymore because they're not able to reproduce those frequencies. So if you're looking at the fundamental frequency of your, of your kick drum, 55 hertz is a good place to, uh, to start. So this is what that looks like on a spectrograph, okay? So we have this one waveform, which is giving us the thump and the sub. So let's add a click to it. These are just little sample players. So they're samples that are st stacked on top of this, on top of this uh, generator here. Let me solo this. So just this little click, 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 click is just stacked on top of this to create sort of one uh, one coherent whole. So. The, the character that this misses can be given back with this click. And let me just sample, cycle through a little bit of the sample so you can see. So as you can see, you can really shape, you can really shape the information part of the, of the kick, which is the stuff that our, where our ears is very sensitive to by using the, the samples that that evokes the right stuff for you. While at the same time, the low end is really tough and tight and will sound amazing on a big dance floor. Because if your fundamental frequency is not very well defined and it's a bit blurry, 
that could that could mean that your track will sound a bit weaker on a big dance floor. I mean, it's not guaranteed, but you know, it's good to have a solid low end. Um, so this is uh, then this signal gets bunched together and gets sent through a couple of effects. It gets sent through an equalizer, it gets sent through a distortion unit, a drive unit, a compressor, and then finally through a limiter. We're not going to talk about all those right now because I want to move on to the next plugin. But so just think about this as the mental model. You've got the the generator, which is creates one wave that sweeps from high to low, and then that creates the the thump in the chest and the sub in the lows. And then on top of that, you just stack some samples, which don't have a lot of low end frequencies. They just give character and they give your ear something to hang on to in those upper frequencies where the where this fundamental frequency is not so active. Okay, let me show you another plugin called Punchbox. Whoops, Punchbox. Let me initiate Punchbox. Punchbox is a plugin made by D16 Group and it's a wonderful little beast. Um, uh, this is a lot of information to take in, but let me simplify it for you. This gray unit in the center, this is your generator. Okay, this is the same thing as that big blue screen on the Kick 2 that we were just looking at. And it has a couple of basic formulas that you can use to start off your kick drum. And no coincidence, it has a 909 as a starting point, which sounds like this, an 808, sounds like this. So these should start to sound familiar to you now. A 606, which is a lot thinner. And then a sine wave, which is very similar to what we were just doing in the kick two, which has a kind of a, a sine wave that goes from high to low. Um, and then on the left of this kick, are three units that are effectively just samplers. They're called click, tops, and tools. But each each column of these, it just loads a sample in there. And there's a couple of controls per sample um, about things like panning, how long will the sample go, how is it tuned to, how, you know, what the decay is, should you high cut it, low cut it, uh, its volume, etc. But uh, it's just they're just sample players. All three of them are identical. So let me just load up a click. The Smurf, that's a good one. <laughs> um, okay, so then, hang on. Oh, let's go for the 909 plus the click. Excellent. Um, and let's add some, let's add something called the tools, which is probably just another way of saying it's, it's an, it samples like the clicks, but a bit more lower down, so they uh, give a little bit more character to the sound. And quite like this one. So now they're all kind of blending together into something that has a bit more character than just a 909 or just an 808. And then these sounds all get bunched together and they get sent through a, an array of effects here from left to right. They get sent through a bit crusher, through a distortion unit, through a filter, through an equalizer and into a limiter. And just to give you a, a good taste, I'm going to open up the distortion unit. And the distortion unit on this is beautiful. So listen to this. So all these controls, they just sort of, I'm not using them in a very intellectual way. I'm just turning them to taste because what I want is to add some grit to it. And I want to blend these units, these sounds together so that they kind of uh, sound as like one coherent kick. But let's say I like this. Let's say I like this. Now maybe I'll also add a filter to roll off some of the high frequencies. Now the more you use a, um, a low pass filter, the more something's going to sound like it's underwater, right? And so even though that might make your sound sound more dark and that's kind of what you want, there's a point at which it's too dark and too dull. So you probably just want to like... This might be a bit too hi-fi and clicky for you, so you might just take the edge off that, but maybe not go further than this to go all the way underwater, you know, because then you, you also cut off the punch a little bit. So I think here is pretty good. Then there's a limiter, just drag it down so it's limiting a little bit. And this could be my kick drum, for instance, for this for, as a start for a, for a techno track. And the cool feature is that you can just export the sample as you wish, and now it's right there and you just call it cool techno kick number one. 
because I'm going to make a bunch of them. Um, and again, we just use the same architecture, which is a, a generator, which creates one solid, um, one solid sound, which is going to provide the thump and the sub, and then three uh, samples, samples on top of it just to give it character and flavor so it doesn't sound like every other 808 or 909 out there. And then we added some effects just to glue those bits together. But effectively, this generator really is the meat of the kick. And it means that the low frequencies are going to be very coherent and going to sound great when amplified on a festival stage, which is, of course, where I expect you to, uh, to play your music once you have learned all the basics. <laughs> um, so there, I think, I think we've gone through more or less all the basics of kick drums. This is a good starting point now. You know the difference between an acoustic kick drum and an electronic kick drum. You know how you could get some acoustic kick drum samples and, and how to layer them. Uh, you know how to slice them out of breaks if necessary. You know that uh, the acoustic, no, the um, electronic kick drums usually come from drum machines and iconic drum machines that have shaped the sounds that we use. So they're a very good starting point to start your kick drum uh, shaping from. But then there's also some dedicated VSTs which allow you to layer some samples on top of a classic sound to make it your own and then to blend all those together with some effects. And that gives you a massive palette uh, for, for, for your own kick drum design. So I hope that was helpful. I'm going to leave it there. Um, if you want some content like this in a more structured format, we run boot camps in real classrooms, so with with actual interaction um, through our website. So uh, underdogmusicschool.com. Let me, there we go, underdogmusicschool.com. And I'm Oscar, Oscar at underdogmusicschool.com. You can always uh, reach me uh, for signing up for one of these classes or for doing a coaching session or something like this. I'm very happy to help with this kind of thing. Um, and yeah, that's all from my side. And I hope you have a blessed day and kick some ass out there. Make some sweet ass kick drums, okay? Peace.